Hello, we're back on the virus channel. Uh, it's been oh. a while, but with a special guest today, one of my favorite artists right now. Um, Jax. Yeah. So, how you doing? <laughs> good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, okay. We always start. We always start with the same question, and it's a very random right. question. But sure. What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Um, I'm going to say McDonald's just because it's always been there, you know. It's very, it's just everywhere. Um, I feel like a lot of the other fast food places are pretty inconsistent. And like that one, I mean, I used to work there for two years, so I ate a lot of it, like <laughs> closing and shit. So yeah, it's been pretty consistent. I mean, it's it's all fast food garbage. Like, it's all grease and shit, but like mm -hmm. that, I could fuck up some McDonald's, unfortunately. <laughs> That's a pride. I feel like most people that work there usually hate it after that, you know. Uh, I've heard that. I, I guess I'm just different. I mean, I, I, I did have like kind of a, I, I didn't like it after a while, but then I started fucking with it <laughs> like a, a year after I stopped working there. Mm. So what, what would your order be from McDonald's? Oh, I mix and match all the time. I, I got so used to the menu that I just switched it up a lot. Like sometimes I'll get like quarter pounder meal or like, <laughs> maybe like six nuggets or junior chicken or like a combo of them sometimes medium fry and sometimes like a fruitopia or sprite or you know nice maybe nice. a smoothie i like their smoothies okay so first off how old are you and where are you from i'm 18 and i'm from nova scotia canada okay that's the that's on the east right yeah it's like the eastest point of or maybe almost the eastest point of North America. It's very like, if the United States is right here, I'm like right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what was it like growing up there? Pretty good, honestly. Yeah. I, I'm really grateful for like the way I grew up. It's like, I had like free healthcare and shit, so <laughs> I was pretty, that's pretty hype to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess like, it's, it's a nice city, definitely, Halifax. I grew up kind of outside of Halifax, but I live in Halifax now and pretty pretty dope. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought about moving away, like out of that com area completely? And if so, where would you want to move to? I've definitely thought about it. And if I were to move, I would probably move to Montreal in, in Quebec, just because uh, I think the mu music scene is really booming there and there's a lot of room to grow there. The city is pretty small here, so if I were to move, it would be to expand my horizons. But I'll always have a special spot for Halifax. Do you, do you speak French? I used to, and then I completely forgot all of it. <laughs> I'm sure if I learned it again, it might click, but... And whatever French I was speaking was always like what they call franglais, where it's just like, sounds like English, but is French. It's kind of like... <laughs> Because I used to go to like French school and that's how they talked, so that's how I learned, you know? <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, so, where, so where you live now, what would you say is the best thing about living there? Or would you say is the worst thing about living there? I'd say the worst thing is definitely the traffic. Like, it's so disgusting to get around because they are doing construction on literally every single street here. And they don't, they don't do night construction, so it's all during the day when I'm trying to get to work or school. And fucking... Best thing about working here, or not working here, best thing about living here is definitely the people because I've made so many good friends here and I think the music scene is really like, really friendly and together and stuff. Nice. Especially the emo scene, as of lately. Nice. Um, would you say where you live is like a small place? Or yeah, it's a pretty, it's definitely a small place. The, the province is, population is around a million and most of the people are in Halifax, which is a really, really tiny city. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about music. So what do your like friends and family think? Because I would imagine there's not, I don't know, maybe I'm <laughs> wrong, but maybe there's not that many musicians coming out of where you're from. A lot of musicians, they're just, yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of musicians here. Music is very big here. There's always a show going on. Um, yeah, so what, what, do your, what do your friends and family think to your music? Mixed. I mean, I do produce my songs and my mixes are very harsh to the ear or very <laughs> like not really normal or anything. And coming from a family that listens to primarily like rock and pop and 
stuff like that. It, it's kind of like it's it's definitely odd to them. Like I've had some weird, funny comments about it. They're mostly just proud of me. They're they're like, I don't know what. I don't understand your music, but that's okay. You go, girl, basically. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's good. That's Yeah, good. They, they've become very supportive over time, which I really appreciate. That's good. Um, so growing up, what artists were you listening to? Growing up, I mean, I didn't really get into, like, actually listening to music until I turned, like, I want to say, like, 14 or 13. Wait, 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 wait. You didn't get into listening to music? Like, I heard, I was listening to the radio, and <laughs> my parents were putting me on to stuff, but I didn't have the resources to actually, like, find my own music. Okay. So I didn't end up really getting into it until I was around 14, which was not even that long ago, considering, like, it was mm. pretty, like, almost five years ago. Not that long. I'm, I'm a youngin'. Anyway, um, I guess I was listening to, like, I was listening to shit like Fall Out Boy at first, but then it kind of sectioned off into listening to a lot of like folk stuff and ambient stuff and then as of like two years ago i started getting really into emo like midwest emo or just like old old uh hardcore okay interesting so what or sorry was the was the question artists or genres uh artists artists yeah i guess i got into a lot of like like Orchid, Indian Summer, Moss Icon kind of area of emo. And then for folk, I would get into stuff like Gregory and the Hawk. And I, I was really into the band always, like A-L-V-V-A-Y-S. Because uh, the lead singer is from where I'm from, almost. And I'd get into a lot of like Japanese shoegaze <laughs> and like just a lot of stuff. And also Weezer. I was really on a Weezer kick when I was a kid. Nice, nice. <laughs> um... So what's the inspiration or story behind your name? Like, I dialed your number. It's like, mostly something I randomly thought of. I feel like that's where a lot of my like lyrics or melodies or names come from. It's just something I, that randomly pops in my brain. I guess like, a lot of my, my album and my artist name and my kind of concept that I built like last year was very much based on like, personal like relationship stuff I was going through so I was just like pretty much just putting that on full blast and being like this project is all about that and now that I've moved on it's like kind of oh where did that go <laughs> <laughs> um what is there uh is there any specific reason why you have it all one word your name or is it just stylistic choice dealing the swag of other emo musicians you know <laughs> like fucking awake but still in bed or like i buried your flowers like i just looked at those and i was like that's cool I'm gonna do that. <laughs> that's fair that's fair um okay so wait so you you said you only started really listening to music like four or five years ago when did you actually start making music around the same time i felt so inspired by it i just was like i need to make this myself that kind, of, that kind of makes if you go 14 years without really listening to music that much and then you start it's like opens it's the like ends. what is this music stuff i need to i need to do it <laughs> i need to breathe it i need to live it yeah and now i am so it's pretty awesome <laughs> yeah. so um was there any specific thing or artist that made you want to start or was it just the love of music in general two things it was like this band called the Brobex, which is like the project of an old bassist that was in Panic at the Disco. But his band, he was making a lot of like really good lo-fi shit. And I, that was kind of my uh, clue into me being like, oh, I can actually just record this shit at my house. Like I, I really thought you had to go into a studio and do all that stuff. But, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was like, I listened to that band and I was like, this is really cool, like indie rock. And they got like... VSTs and stuff like I could definitely replicate this and then the other thing would be I had an online friend who was like um, Really into like ambient stuff and, and made a lot of music and he was using Ableton and he like inspired me to start Using it and he taught me a little bit about it. Shout out Sky <laughs> Nice, so um So you still use Ableton to this day? Yeah, I I use Pro Tools for school and I Dabble in like other DAWs, but mainly Ableton Nice. Um, you say school, like, is that like college or like university? Yeah. Okay. I go to school for music engineering. Oh, nice. How's that? 
so fun. I fucking love it. <laughs> it's yeah, like it's the first day of school, I was kind of nervous and I pulled up and everybody was obs- as obsessed with emo and music production as <laughs> I was. And I was just like, well, there we are. <laughs> nice. Um, what was the transition to Pro, uh, Pro Tools like? Awful. I mean, it's so bad. I, I don't know, it crashes all the time. It's like they call it the industry standard, but no, I, I know when I graduate, I'm just going to go right back to Ableton. That's that's fair, honestly. That's fair. Um, but I'm, I'm having fun learning like a different DAW for once because it, it does expand my knowledge mm-hmm. in production. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to talk about Bunny Goes to Business School. How did that song come about? Um, so I used to go to university for business and I didn't last very long because the material was like, it just like, as, as soon as I entered class, like went right over my head and I was like, <laughs> hell no, I can't do this. And I, I realized I had to get out of it quick in order to get like a 75% refund on my classes. So I dropped out really quickly. And then I was like, kind of, that song was kind of written in the perspective of the person I was seeing at the time, thinking like how they were kind of talking about me, not like guessing that I wasn't going to be successful at school and just kind of like a, the song that's kind of like, you're right. Oops, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> and as to like the, the bunny symbol, um, again, that was a thing that just randomly came to my mind. Like as soon as I finished the song, nobody's ever compared me to a bunny. I've never thought of myself as a bunny. I never, I don't think about bunnies very often, but my brain was like, bunny goes to business school. So I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so so in this, the song is from the perspective of, is it the perspective about you from another person? Sure, I wrote it in a way that makes it confusing, but that's kind of the theme of it. Okay, okay. Um, so it has over 100k on Spotify. The music that's video nice. has over 100k views. How long after release did it take? before it started taking off. Sure, specifically, but it the so- for the song it took a little less than a year and then for the video it took a few months to to kind of pick up. Okay. Um What do you think it was that helped it gain traction? Was it TikTok, the music video, playlisting? Most definitely the music video. Like that was definitely what sent it kind of more. I was gaining a little bit of traction from just like Kind of like the record label I work for, the connections that kind of came out of that. But it was definitely the music video that really sent it. And I, I can't thank Malcolm enough. He's like the best filmmaker fucking ever. And just like went above and beyond for that. And he's just so passionate about his work and just like, oh my God, I'm so happy I can work with him. Nice. Um, did the song ever get playlisted on Spotify? Not officially, no, but it was on a lot of like... Uh, like if you know the Midwest Emo Essentials Spotify mm-hmm. playlist, I, I know it got on that. Just kind of like fan made bigger playlists, mm-hmm. I would say. But no, I've never been on like a actual Spotify chart playlist. Mm-hmm. And what was the feeling like when you saw that song going up? It's a mix of like anxiety and like <laughs> also excitement. I was like, holy fuck, people are actually listening to my shit now. And I was like, also like, holy fuck, people are sending me like crazy comments. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of like the mix of both. Very mm-hmm. overwhelming, but also I'm very happy and stoked it happened because it brought me to cool places, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you ever use TikTok to promote your music or nah? I do. I post my live clips on there sometimes. And I, I did post a little bit of a music video on there. I, I like using it sometimes. Mm-hmm. I've had a few, I've had like two videos surpass around like 500k views, but one of them was like a cover I did with my uh, partner, and one of them was a Your Arms Make a King video I shot, <laughs> or my friend shot actually, and I just posted it. <laughs> nice. Um, would you say TikTok is necessary to have as an artist? No, absolutely not. It's necessary if you're really, really wanting to like put your music everywhere, promote it everywhere, but there is a really good chance that you'll get big without using it, for sure. Hell yeah. I if, you, if you take the right steps and wait the amount of time and everything. That's good. I feel like in 2024, a lot of people would disagree with that, I think. Yeah, a lot of people do use TikTok, and, a, and TikTok does really help, but even if it helps, it's not mandatory. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, I would I, agree. I, I, I know a ton of artists that are really against like TikTok, just like the laws around it and the fact that it's like based on short form content. And I, yeah. I totally understand that perspective. And I, I've seen them get a similar amount of success just by doing it through like YouTube, Instagram and shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really it's really up to the artist. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong answer for this, but if you could give advice for someone that's trying to get their song to pop off, what what advice would you give them? This would definitely be don't expect it to pop off because it's really all about the music, and if people just end up listening to it, it'll it'll go like. The way I kind of went about it, I've been making music ever since I was 14, releasing it and not expecting anything to come out of it. And it made me really like, just get passionate about the music and it, it, it really hurts your art to, to try and appeal to certain audiences. You really got to be authentic yourself. Yeah. I mean, it, it's totally fair to want to pop off and try to <laughs> pop off. That's fine. I mean, like, it's the reason I even advertise my music in the first place. But, you know, it's just my advice would be no, to not take it too seriously. Yeah, that's that's pretty good advice, to be honest. Um, OK, I know, I know you briefly uh, you mentioned someone a minute ago. Um, but I have a question about not necessarily a question, but um, the music video for uh Bunny goes to business school is incredible. the The vintage VHS feel is like perfect for yeah, the song. That's an awesome thing. It fucking it rules. I love it. So I was gonna say, is all your music videos your direction or envision, or do you have? You say Malcolm? Are they? Yeah, it's all it's all Malcolm's vision. I I'm I'm like the music one, and he's like the film one, basically. And we just kind of like. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, no, like I do get a say in what happens, and I do get a say in what kind of shots we'll take. But the the concepts are definitely mostly him, like ninety percent him. Yeah, are they from your area? Yeah. yeah, him and I live really close to each other. Oh, nice, nice. Um, okay, so what's your recording process like? Mm, it's quite random. I I just have like. Kind of like any other solo producer who is broke, kind of like a Scarlet Solo interface and a laptop and just a bunch of pirated plugins and software <laughs> all working together. <laughs> My process though, I, I write lyrics first and then I think of a melody to complement those lyrics and then I, I start out with a riff, put some MIDI drums on top of it, throw some synths in there, kind of mix it around a little bit, and then that's pretty much how I do it. Nice. Um, how long would you say it takes you to make a song on average? Depends on how layered it is. I I have a lot of songs on Hourglass that I knocked out within an hour or two hours, but and there's times where I'm so obsessed with the way a mix is sounding that I'll just stay in my room for like 24 hours. <laughs> Minimal breaks, just like really like mixing and mm. focusing on it. So it kind of varies. Mm. So you say you use a laptop. Yeah, I've always used a laptop, just portability. I move around a lot, so it's nice. Do you, so you be, when you're recording in Ableton, do you use the, what's it called, a touchpad? Is that the thing on the laptop? Do you use that? Uh, or do you have yeah, a, or do you have a most mouse? Of the time, most of the time I use a touchpad, but a that's, mouse is definitely better. That's insane, I'm not gonna lie. I just like the way, I like the way I can like zoom in on the mix with it. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. And it's too bad. Like I don't. Like I have a MIDI controller, so I don't. I don't have to kind of play piano on my keyboard or anything. Mm, that's good. That's good. Which is like absolute hell. Mm. I imagine you're used to using the touchpad now. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I got used to it pretty much. Um, I mean, I used to make music on my phone, which was ultimately worse. Wait, what? What? Uh, like BandLab? Yeah, like BandLab, or. I used to Soundtrap for a little bit, like a long time ago, but I definitely, the die I definitely stuck to the most was Ableton. Yeah. yeah. That's, it is, it is probably the best one, I'm not gonna lie. Ableton, probably. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, so am I- Dark right? Mode. What do you say, sorry? 
I said dark, dark mode only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so am I right in saying so I dialed your number is you, but when you yes. perform, you perform with a band. That's right. So, um, so all, all your songs is mixed by you, written by you, produced by you. Doing everything. That's insane. So, um, how many instruments do you play? Um, I wouldn't say I'm like proficient in any of them, but I, I just learned enough multi instruments to just record my own ideas. So I, I do, I am good at uh, guitar and keyboard, which is like the main instruments for music production. I can't play drums very well, but I just, I like to, I prefer to program them anyway for that kind of electronic sound. And as for other instruments, I, I played bass, but not like, I've never studied bass or really cracked down mm -hmm. on it. I just play like a guitar or three notes and stuff. And then, yeah, that's pretty much my instrument history. So, so you started making music around 14. When did, 13, 14, around there. When did the uh, when did the guitar come in to that? Like straight away? Straight away, but I was recording music and learning guitar at the same time. So a lot, if, you, if you've ever seen like my previous projects and realized why they sound so terrible, it's because I didn't <laughs> even know how to tune my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's fair enough. Um, so have you, so would you say you're in a band currently or no? Like my elder number. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um, it's my solo project, but it is also like a live band, and we do a lot of like live work. Like we work on transitions, we work on set lists and everything. Okay. Um, this is kind of random, but what's the reason you don't have a SoundCloud? I just I can't get with the layout. Uh, it bothers <laughs> me. I I got somebody else to upload all my stuff to SoundCloud recently. I gave him permission to do it because I just, I couldn't be bothered. I I do love a lot of music that's on SoundCloud, but I don't know why. I just don't, never really had much of a, never really had much of an ask for it to go on SoundCloud. So I just never bothered. So you, you don't think you ever will? There's no, there's no plans to for you right now? Not an official one, but I gave somebody permission to just upload everything and gave them a Bandcamp code to my stuff so they can download it and re-upload it there. Nice. Um, are you signed to a label or have any management? I co-own a record label and I really sell my music under it. It's called Warm Walk Records and it's based in the US and Canada. You say you co-own? Yeah, I, I help run one with uh, my friends. <laughs> well, how, how did that come about? It was a long story. It was basically like the label kind of started because my best friend Colby, he was like asked by Camping in Alaska to do stuff for them and it kind of turned into a big thing after that and we started doing more more cassette runs and vinyl runs and tape or I don't know why I said cassette and tape, but <laughs> cassette and vinyl runs for multiple bands after that and it just turned into a big business. A lot of like money stuff involved and graphic design and everything so it, yeah it's been a great experience so far yeah that sounds pretty sick i'm not gonna lie i, I didn't know that that's insane yeah i have so much fun connecting with artists through it and like encouraging them to go all out with their creative projects because it's it's the kind of label that we don't really like sign people with a contract it's diy like if you want a cassette run we'll get you a cassette run <laughs> yeah that's that's good um have you had, I don't know if you answer this, but have you had any offers from any labels? Yeah, I've had, I've had a few offers, but I've turned them down lately. <laughs> well, what was the reason for turning them down? I'm just very dedicated to, to my own label already. And I feel like I kind of have everything I need and I feel like there's no purpose for me to branch off to another label. Yeah. But yeah, that's fair. Even if it's even about money, because I I get enough money from the runs we do. So. Mm, that's fair. Um, looking at your Instagram, you've done quite a lot of shows. How many? How many would you say you've done? 
Ooh, I don't know. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, a lot of those posts are like archived too, so I'm trying to like account for them. I only started playing shows under I Dialed Your Number early this year, so... Um, I have no idea of a number, but... A lot. Plenty. A, a decent amount. <laughs> yeah. A decent amount, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what's the best thing about performing? Best thing about performing? Um, probably just got it, getting to hear my ideas in, in a live setting and connecting with people over it and get also getting to better my kind of friendship with bandmates and everything. Oh yeah. We just have a lot of fun and I, that's what I need after <laughs> being in my room for so long producing music. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see the, yeah, the live yeah. reaction to it, yeah. Um, do you have a performance that maybe was the most memorable or maybe a favorite place you performed and why? Definitely August 9th at the skate park because we played with two bands I really like, uh, Your Arms Mickey Coon and Algae Bloom. And I was organizing the show as well and I rented a shit ton, shit ton of gear and it started pouring rain even though the forecast didn't account for pouring rain. So water kept pooling into all the gear and I was like, fuck, I'm gonna lose 6,000 bucks. I'm so anxious. <laughs> and turns out all the gear was fine. It was a miracle. but. Then after that, I realized that was like a crazy show. Like the, the crowd, the turnout was great. It was it was pouring rain during your arms like a coon, which is a vibe I can't lie. <laughs> and then our set was really good too. I feel like I, I felt good after it. So when you have shows like that, are you do you realize this might sound stupid? Do you realize how much you're enjoying it in the moment, or is it more so after the fact that you're like, wow, that was insane? question it's a little bit of both it depends on the day and, and depends what mood i'm in but most of the time i'm like i'm on stage and i'm just really excited to be there and then when i'm off stage i get like adrenaline and then after the show i'm like wow i'm glad that happened yeah mostly positive do you have any pre-show i don't want to say rituals that sounds quite serious but any like pre-show like things you do to like get in the zone? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm just obsessed with like, do I have my capo? Do I have my pick? Do I have my <laughs> set list? Like kind of just, yeah. I need to be all ready, you know? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the only thing I consistently do before a show. That's fair. Um, okay, so what are your, what are your plans and goals for the rest of 2024? For the rest of 2024, um, I'm mostly focusing on getting this new album that I'm working on, hopefully out this year. And uh, yeah, just trying to make a little more connections and play more shows, I, I'd say. Um, and the next year is my big like tour year. I'm very excited. So preparing for that too. Nice. Um, do you think the, the project you're trying to drop will have a single to it? Or? Probably not. No? I'm not a big fan of releasing singles for some reason. I know I've done it twice, but it just doesn't rub me the right way. Just in, I don't know. I, I prefer to kind of have like a full release. That's like a story. And I feel like if I post part of that story before, I'm a little like mm. offset. <laughs> so um, it's called Ghost Hands, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. So that that won't be on the project about it because ghost hands is a like a full studio recording that of a song that i have already recorded in my own style like my solo hourglass kind of style mm. um and i was thinking of releasing that earlier one on the new one but i'm not sure yet <laughs> mm. what's the uh the project you're next releasing is that is a lot of that studio made or is that still in your bedroom bedroom i i came to the conclusion that i feel like this like i dialed your number project should just be me and if i'm gonna work on hi-fi stuff which i definitely am because i am in school for music um i think i would do it as a side project or another project hmm. i feel like this I, I feel like i dialed your number is mostly it it should just be a, me and how i think about things <laughs> yeah yeah i feel that um 
But I love a good studio recording. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Is, um... Okay, uh, where do you see yourself five years from now? Five years? Well, music-wise, I hope to be in the same boat. Pretty, pretty uh, happy with how it's going now. I hope it just continues like this. And for, I hope I'm working as like a sound engineer or making enough, hopefully making enough money to sell music itself, which <laughs> kind of is, kind of am right now, but it's sort of. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think that's, that's definitely, for five years, that's definitely achievable, for sure. Um, I think where I want to be in five years. Uh, is there anything else you want to say that maybe I haven't? I don't know. Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we're near the end. Uh, I'm going to ask you some very random quick fire questions. Uh, Sounds good. You can explain your answer if you want to. That's up to you. Um, mm -hmm. Are you ready? Uh, <clears throat> what's the best thing in the world besides music? Mm, that's a good question. I need to think about that for a second. Probably love. <laughs> That's <laughs> that's fair. That's probably true, and I, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of hate that that's true, but that is probably true. I hate that it's true too because it's so complicated all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but good love is great. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you could know the answer to any question in the world, what would it be? Meaning of not what the meaning of life is, but just why is everything everywhere like just general questions existential questions like that like why is there grass why is there <laughs> seeds why are there animals why do they look like that why do their bodies work completely fine like why does everything in their body work all together and you know just mm. why why are why has everything just like spawned here yeah. i'm so confused how we got to this point where how are we here? This is... We, I, I was born way too advanced. <laughs> we just got self-driving cars and... I hate that the brain is aware of itself. <laughs> um, okay, uh, what's the last thing you did for the first time? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, um... So, for example, uh, let's say I went skydiving yesterday. That would be my first time ever doing that. And that would be the last time I did something for the first time. Does that make sense? The last time I did something for the first time, um, hmm, I gotta think about that one. I don't really remember anything before an hour ago. <laughs> um, uh, yesterday was a blur. Um, last thing. Um, maybe I would say hugged one of my friends, like a specific friend that I've never hugged before yesterday. Nice. Um, favorite album of all time? Favorite album of all time? I don't know. <laughs> I have a favorite song. I have My favorite song is The Moon by the Microphones. My second favorite song is Welcome to Destiny Island by Oolong. And my third favorite song is Bike Cops by Ogbert the Nerd. But I don't know what my favorite album is because it kind of... it. I teeter between albums all the time. Though a very consistent album of mine as of late is the new year. I'm my cocoon record. Death of a Rabbit. Nice. Uh, what's your favorite song you've made? My favorite song I've made? I also don't know. But I think it might be... The homie build is gone. Nice, yeah. Or, I, love, I love that song. Thanks. Or uh, I'm no longer in control of my body. I like that one. Um, if you not can... a big fan of Bunny goes to business school. Oh really? No. I, I mean, I rushed that one, and I don't. I'm not. I mean, like, I'm. I'm really hyped for how far it's gone, and I def. I definitely see the like good parts about it, but. 
to me, I definitely could have done better. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, you're your own biggest critic, I guess. Exactly. So, yeah. Nobody's going to think about this as much as I'm going to think about Yeah. That gives me a peace of mind. Mm. Um, if you could be any animal, what would you be and why? I would be a fly, just so I could annoy people, fly in the air, be small and practically invisible, <laughs> and not really need much sustenance to live. That's a great answer, to be honest. Um, favorite TV show or movie of all time? I really like the show um, Community, the sitcom, but I also love Breaking Bad. <laughs> nice. Um, who's your favorite character in Breaking Bad? Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> the goat, the goat. I compare myself to him all the time because like, pe people go up to me and they're like, Jesse, we need a cook. And I'm like, I never get tired of that joke. It's so funny. <laughs> um, okay. I just thought of this just now, but... Mm -hmm. I ask everyone Canadian this in general. What's your opinion on Drake? Nobody here fucks with Drake. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't associate with him, and I am pretty fucking angry that I have to share a country, let alone the world, with him. You know, that's, that's... God, I, I hate ultra famous people who just like have billions of dollars, and they're like committing terrible crimes all the time and they're just like expecting us to still like them and I'm like no man is that um is that the general consensus in your area about Drake would you say I've never met anyone that likes Drake <laughs> nowadays maybe like back then when one of his songs blew up somebody would like that song but hmm, when, whenever I get into a conversation about Drake everybody's just like fucking hate that guy you know that's too funny <laughs> um He's easy to hate, eh? Cause, like, fucking, oh my god, he fucking, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, um, you sort of, um, briefly mentioned it a minute ago, but I'm gonna ask you what you think. Uh, this is the last question. What is the meaning of life to you? The meaning of life to me is just, you're here once to just, like, try it. And you'll find things that you like. And that means dopamine, which is what we were like born to have. And dopamine makes us feel good. So just like seek that in ways that aren't hard drugs. <laughs> but in other ways, in, in happy ways like music. Yeah, thanks. But if you do hard drugs, all power to you. Stay safe, buddy. That's a, that's a great answer. Um, yeah, so... Thank you for coming on. Future, Thanks for having future me. legend right here. It was fun. I really like your tattoos. Thank you. Thank you.